Victor, and we're going. Well, uh, welcome today to Robert Van Zieten, and I'm going to let Robert introduce himself. Hi, thanks, Paul, and thank you for this opportunity to, to come and talk with you and to your, your parish, your congregation, and to talk a little bit about what I do. Well, my name, as you said, is Robert. I'm a Uniting Church minister, and since 2019, I've been working as the chaplain at Uniting Age Well Kalki, which has two facilities, one at Nangata and one at Kalki Murray. At the moment, because of the COVID, I'm limited to the ones site which is uh, Uniting Age World Kalki Murray. We have about 40 residents there and I, before that I, you may, I used to come to St Luke sometimes as a school chaplain and speak there about the work and your church was extremely supportive of your congregation not only financially but pastorally and in terms of supporting that type of ministry. I, I found St Luke's like with so many Uniting Churches so caring about what's going on in the wider world. So what do I do at United Edge World Kalki, I do one-on-one -on -one pastoral visits. I can go, I initiate many of those myself by just knocking on a resident's door and seeing if they'd like a visit or they request it either through staff or they've got my phone number and they can ring me and, and ask me to come and visit. So I walk, I, do, I work three days a week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll go around visiting one-on-one -on -one and then have some lovely opportunities to meet people there that way. The other thing I do once a week, we have a service, a Thursday afternoon church service. It's only a short half hour service and we're even limited. That's another COVID restriction. We can only sing two hymns out loud as part of the aged care restrictions that we have, but we're allowed to play a DVD. And I always say to the, to the everyone residents, if you want to sing along, I'm sure, no one's going to mind too much. So that's another sort of way we, we try to get over that. But we can only actually sing two hymns together. And our stage there during the COVID was only one hymn we were allowed to actually sing because people are so worried about, of course, it comes through our uh, the droplets. So the church service is very important. We have almost half the number of residents come to the church service, which is really encouraging at the moment. And it's very important to, to many of these residents who before they came to Kalki, used to attend churches regularly, attend church services or were part of congregations. What I find is probably hitting our residents and probably hitting people like yourselves the most is the sense of isolation, the loneliness, the going out on outings, either with family or friends, and the missing the family visits or going out with the family. So there's a real sense of isolation and loneliness, and that's incredibly hard. And I think we're all, I don't, I don't think it's only with aged care, but because I, I know I'm feeling that myself, and I know a lot of people, I know many of you would be feeling the same. And there's a sense of tiredness around it too. I'm not sure why, but we, many of us feel tired and uh, one, I think it's a sense of when, how long will this go and all that sort of thing. And they're, they're asking that, when will, we, when will we be set free? I'm not laughing in a sorry frivolous way, but no. they're really asking that. We want to be set free, a couple of residents oh. say to me, quite, and I say, I fully understand that. I'd love you to be set free. So you could just go and have a cup of coffee again at a shopping centre or just visit family. Mm. You're uh, saying that there's a sense, though, of community, that they're supporting yeah. each other. That is a very a great thing, the same as... Your, your folk coming together on, on a Thursday afternoon for the midweek service. The fact that they live at Kalki and they have lunch and dinner together if they want to, they can meet, do it in their rooms, but many come together. That does help ease that sense of loneliness. They have each other. And I, I really feel that at the moment, um, people are being extremely supportive of one another. We had a funeral service. I was asked to lead, sadly, of one of our residents, a lovely, lovely person. And in his eulogy, the son, he thanked the Kalki staff, but also the residents. And I shared that in the next service. He thanked the residents for the support they gave his mother. And mm -hmm. I thought that was very important to share. And I've shared that a few times with the residents that what you do for one another is pastoral care and is loving and helps, is so supportive. That we also have the lifestyle people, they're, they're called lifestyle, they're they provide activities and entertainment for the, for the residents. And of course, pre-COVID entertainers could come in once or twice a week and do things. We could have visitors come in and do exercises. 
we can't do any of that now. So they're, they've got a very big task in front of them, but they're wonderful people and they do fun activities, entertainment, and they also organise the phone calls with families and friends. We often people do it on FaceTime and they're able to that way link in with their loved ones, wherever they may be, whether here in Geelong or overseas or interstate. So, so thank you for sharing, the, the, giving us a Absolutely. genuine thank picture you. of the situation and, and the role that you have, even though it's a little limited because of COVID. Yes. And just wanted to say on behalf of the St. Luke's community that we'll continue to hold you and your ministry in prayer. And we just want to thank you for what you do. Um, it's really appreciated, especially as you're able to be there when we can't be. So yes. just thank you, Robert. And thanks, for giving, to, thanks, Paul. Give, thanks, and thanks for giving us your time uh, to, to share this, this video with us. Thanks very well, much. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you.